This is a tutorial on how to use while loops in MATLAB. While loops allow the execution of a block of code until a certain condition is met. Unlike for loops, which run for a predetermined number of iterations, while loops can continue indefinitely, so long as their condition is unmet. This can be very useful when the number of iterations is not known beforehand, such as when you want to continue to evaluate some expression until there is convergence, for example, or until you reach a certain state. So let's look at the general form. We start a while loop with a statement while, then there is a logical expression, then there is a block of code here, and end. So this is it. Basically what it says is that while this logical expression is true, we're going to evaluate this code. Once the logical expression becomes false, we exit and move beyond the end statement. Let's look at some examples. So let's say we have a variable a equal to 1, and we'll say that while a is less than 10, we will increment a by 1. And that's it. If we, if we do not suppress the output here, we can see what's actually happening. And what we get is the following. First of all, a started equal to 1. Then the first loop iteration, we made a equal to a plus 1. So it starts off at 2 the first time that it displays. Then it goes to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and finally 10. Once a gets incremented beyond 9, it becomes 10. The next time that this while loop looks at a logical expression, it's no longer true, since 10 is not less than 10. And therefore, we exit the while loop. Notice that something inside the while loop has to change the logical expression, otherwise the while loop will either never execute or will never exit. If a did not increment throughout this while loop, then this expression here would never become false. Let's look at a more interesting example. Let's say that we want to put some money in the bank and subject to a yearly interest rate we want to see how long it'll take until we reach a million dollars for example and can retire. So the structure of this is we'll start off with a given balance let's say five thousand dollars and we'll start off the year, we have to count it ourselves now, at zero. While balance is less than one million, balance will equal 8% interest times the previous balance and at the beginning of every year we're also going to deposit another $5,000. We have to increment year ourselves to count how many years it'll take because unlike a for loop, nothing is actually incrementing automatically. And that's it. We can end it here. And at the end, we can display the year, how long it took, how many years it took. And we can also display the actual balance that we've accumulated. So let's run this code. And here's the answer we get that it took 36 years and we have just over a million dollars by the end. So what happened was we started off with 5,000, year is equal to zero. The first time this while loop looks at this logical expression, balance is less than a million, it's equal to 5,000. Therefore it goes in, increments balance by multiplying by 1.08 and adding 5,000 and the year gets incremented as well. So now year is equal to one and balance is equal to a new value corresponding to this uh, product and sum. Now, the while loop again, after everything is completed here, looks, is balance less than a million? It is. And it keeps going until, let's say, year is equal to 35. When year is equal to 35, balance, after this product and sum, will be just over a million. But that doesn't mean that we exit immediately. 
because there is more code in the body. We also increment year by 1 and year now becomes 36. Now we go back to the beginning and the while loop again looks at the logical expression and it sees that balance is no longer less than a million. Therefore we exit and continue with the rest of the code displaying the year and the balance which is exactly what we see here in the command window. While loops can also be used just like for loops. For example, let's say that we have a vector 1 through 10 and we want to find the sum of this vector. We can have a variable sum a which is going to be keeping our current sum and we'll also have to declare a counter ourselves. And we can say that while counter is less than or equal to the length of a, we're going to make sum a equal to sum a plus a of counter. And counter is equal to counter plus 1. We'll be incrementing that ourselves. And at the end, we can display the final value in the sum. So again, I omitted a semicolon here to show what happens. And let me actually omit it on the counter as well. When we run this, let me clear the screen first. When we run this, we get the following results. We see that sum a starts off as 1 because we add the first value of a, which is 1, to 0, which is what sum a starts with. And counter increments to 2 since at first it was 1. And then we check again. Is counter less than the length of a? Yes. Right now it's 2. So then we go on to the next value and we add a of 2 to the previous sum and increment counter again. And again we check is counter less than or equal to the length of a. And it keeps going in this way. We can see these outputs. Counter keeps increasing by 1, by 1, by 1. And here we go at the end. We see that sum a is equal to 55. So this is when counter is equal to 10, the length of a. So it's still less than or equal to. So it goes to a loop one more time. Sum a becomes 55. Counter becomes 11. We perform this check again. Counter is no longer less than or equal to the length of a because 11 is greater than 10. And so we exit and move on to the end and display the sum of a. In general, you have to remember that in while loops, we have to change something in the expression in order to make this logical expression false at some point, otherwise we will remain in the loop indefinitely. The difference, of course, between this and a for loop is that in a for loop, we had a counter that changed automatically on every loop iteration. However, if we do this ourselves, we can emulate the exact function of a for loop using a while loop. Altogether, while loops are an important tool in a programmer's arsenal. Although for loops make iteration easy, they are not as versatile as while loops. While loops give you full control over all aspects of the iteration, including any indices that you want to increment. They also allow you to have indices that increment non-uniformly, but rather depend on conditions of variables in the code. This versatility makes while loops an extremely important construct and a great programming tool.